Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Today, the gloves come off. <laughs> not really. Uh, I'm not prepared to go that far. But I do want to discuss uh, some, uh, um, some issues that uh, I've been dealing with here on YouTube. Many of you know that uh, uh, I have been um, resting on what I call a four-legged stool, and, and that, that consists of these principles. One, the doctrine that Jesus Christ is eternal, God Almighty. Two, that salvation is a free gift from God, offered to everyone. We receive this gift of a salvation and eternal life simply by believing on Jesus Christ. It's faith alone in Christ alone. The next leg of the stool is that once we've received this gift of eternal life uh, by our faith in Jesus Christ, that we could never lose our salvation for any reason. These are the core doctrines that I think that Christianity is, is really based upon. And then the fourth leg of this stool is that in order to uh, have fellowship uh, with me, for me, for me to be able, feel comfortable of, about having fellowship with any person, they must adhere to these three doctrines and then also be willing and able to tolerate other people's opinions on all other theological subjects, whether it's uh, Bible translations or end times uh, theology uh, or gifts of the Spirit or a hundred other things, that we should be able to discuss all the other theological questions and still have good manners be polite and loving to each other, even when we disagree. In fact, uh, I really desire that people enter the discussion who do disagree, because if we have a variety of opinions, that's how we all learn from each other. But what I do is insist upon is that uh, when disagreements happen, that uh, we must remain civil and courteous and loving to each other and never uh, resort to anger, hatefulness, and, and personal attacks. So that's what I refer to as my four-legged stool. Uh, you've probably heard me talk about this numerous times uh, before. Um, I recently started a program called Ready with an Answer, and it's based upon uh, uh, the verse in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. And it, uh, it goes like this, verse 15. But in your hearts set Christ apart as holy and acknowledge him as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope that is in you. But do it courteously, courteously and respectfully. So we should be ready with an answer uh, study the scriptures so we're prepared to give answers, but always be courteous and respectful while we're doing it. And then verse 16 says, And see to it that your conscience is entirely clear, unimpaired, so that when you are falsely accused as evildoers, uh, those who threaten you abusively and revile your right behavior in Christ may come to be ashamed of slandering your good lives. So I've had to keep this in mind uh, as I dared to give answers to your questions that some people are not going to like the answers and that uh, some people are going to revort, resort to uh, calling me an evildoer and uh, slandering my name. 
I have certainly uh, endured this for several years here on YouTube, and I've also told anybody who wants to join in the discussion on my uh, Ready With An Answer show that you better also be prepared to endure some attacks from these people. And immediately after the very first show, we had one of the brothers uh, that uh, uh, has been attacked horribly uh, because of the answer that he gave. So uh, this is something that we, if we dare to enter the arena of ideas, that we must be willing that to uh, and enter the arena with full knowledge that we're going to be attacked and slandered. However, if someone does resort to personal attacks, then that person is cannot be part of my fellowship because they cross the line. They're, they're, it's certainly okay for people to debate the doctrines. Um, I, I'm willing to tell you what I think, listen to what you think, and we can have a cordial debate and discussion on it. But when you cross a line, and it goes beyond doctrine and, and resorts to personal attacks and slander, uh, that's when you've gone too far. And uh, I'm sure that uh, Jesus would not approve of that kind of discussion. I believe that Jesus would be ashamed that you have resorted to personal attacks. So over the years, uh, there have been a few people on YouTube that have decided that they were going to... Uh, attack me personally, not just not just uh, any of my doctrines, but personally attack me. Um, some people have even made videos uh, putting up my face uh, and my words, showing me speaking. But they, uh, for example, uh, one person played me speaking in slow motion. Now they did not only took my, my statement out of context, but they didn't even have the character to actually even play the entire sentence. They were so dishonest that they only took one half of one sentence. So they certainly were not presenting anything I said in context at all, but they put it on a loop and had me saying this over and over and over again. And they played it on slow motion and they made it look like I was some kind of walking dead ghoul. Now, I ask you, is that the kind of behavior that you would expect from a brother in Christ? Uh, I, I find no fault if someone wants to challenge any doctrines, but if they can't do it respectfully with courtesy, and with, uh, then they've gone too far when they resort to that kind of tactic. And there's others. Uh, some people have even said to, in watching that particular video, they made a comment, Oh, that was wonderful. You gutted him like a fish. So some people make these videos, and other people uh, make comments on the videos so happy that I was gutted like a fish. Is, is that really a way that you would think that a Christian would behave? Some have also, on their videos, proclaimed that I'm, uh, uh, you know, one of the unrighteous, or one of the, uh, uh, my faith is, is a vain faith, and they show half of my face speaking again in slow motion and, and uh, proclaim that uh, my faith is vain. Uh, and then um, some have referred to me as a heretic and a child of the devil. All of these things, all of these uh, methods of putting my face and words on a video, all of these charges and uh, name-calling have come from professing Christians. The most recent, maybe the most disturbing to me, comes from a brother who I've always loved and admired and uh, I, I believe his doctrine is, is beautiful. And uh, this person is, uh, um, I'm probably more surprised than anybody else, that he decided he would make a, a new channel mocking my channel is Sin City Preacher, and this channel is called Sin City Puker. Sin City Puker. Uh, this person likes to make a lot, a lot of what he calls spoof videos, but I don't find any humor or spoof in the, this type of behavior. Uh, 
it's the same thing where he he shows my face in my words and and just uh, distorts it and mocks it and and attempts to really uh, demean me. I, I I'm always surprised when that comes from someone who is a professing Christian, and even more so when it comes from someone that. Uh, I've always admired and, and loved their ministry and, and told them so over and over again. So these are the kinds of things that I've been observing here on YouTube and enduring on YouTube for, for a couple of years now. Now, here's another issue. Um, there are other people that are close friends of mine that are perfectly aware of that kind of attack against me. Uh, in fact, they'll often even send me a video and say, are you aware of this? Look what this person has done. So I know that they are aware of these horrible slanderous attacks. Uh, and yet, they choose to be friends with those people who are attacking me. Uh, they... Uh, Apparently, think there's no reason why they can't remain friends with them, even though they uh, they are completely aware of how hateful they are with these personal attacks. I've had a hard time understanding how a friend of mine could tolerate uh, other people uh, treating me that way. So I thought, well, maybe maybe I don't really understand what the word friend means. I looked it up, and, and it said a person who whom one knows, uh, likes, and trusts. <clears throat> That's what I thought a friend was. Uh, and then uh, I was wondering, well, what about this? It says a person with whom one is called is allied in a struggle or cause and comrade. And yeah, the, these people were my friends. They, they seemed to like me. I liked them. In fact, I loved them. Uh, and uh, we were allied in, in our cause to tell people the good news about Jesus. And then I was wondering, well, what about loyalty? Is loyalty at, at, at issue here? And uh, I looked up loyalty, it says faithful to a person, ideal, custom, cause, or duty. And I wonder, is, 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 is my friend being faithful when they uh, actually turn a blind eye to people who are making these vicious attacks, personal attacks against me. And it's been very disturbing to me to try to wonder how a friend of mine could could sit idly by and not uh, refute that, rebuke that. Uh, I've had other many friends in my life, even apart from this ministry, that uh, experiences like these that I've had to deal with and uh, I've had to make a decision. I'll, uh, I'll give you one example. I had a close friend of mine in high school and all the way through college we were close friends. And uh, like some of my college friends, we've remained friends now for, well, 40, maybe 50 years. Uh, and this particular person, uh, unfortunately, uh, he he was a very sarcastic, rude person, uh, particularly if he started drinking. Uh, but pertaining to me, this person was admired me so much. He he was always bringing up my, you know, all my athletic uh, achievements from my youth. Uh, that he seemed to admire so much, and and he he knew about my street preaching ministry, and he, he seemed to really respect and admire me for that, and. Uh, he just, I know that he just really loved me and, and admired me, but I had to end a friendship with him. And it wasn't because he mistreated me. It's because I saw how he mistreated my other friends. He was vulgar and rude and hateful and disrespectful to almost everybody he came across. And I couldn't tolerate it. I had to send him away. Oh, I could have easily said, as some of you may be saying now, well, okay, they've always been nice to me. Well, my friend was always very nice to me, admiring me, showering me with praise. He even, he even credited me with saving his life.
and yet I had to tell him to leave, and I, I couldn't associate with him because I, I could not uh, uh, watch him abuse my other friends and family members the way he had, was doing. I thought this, I've done this a couple of times in my life, had to send people away because of their abusiveness, uh, not even to me, but to someone else. Uh, I didn't struggle with that decision. Uh, it, it just seemed like the natural thing to do. Uh, and it wasn't like I was had to choose sides. No, I just ch chose to go with uh, the side of right. You do not, you do not, uh, I could not watch someone being abused and say nothing and do nothing about it. I sit idly by and say, well, they, he's always been nice to me. So that's one reason why it's, it's kind of hard for me to understand how some of my friends on YouTube have observed these personal attacks and they think it's perfectly okay to just remain friends and say nothing. <laughs> I, I just don't get that. So uh, this is basically to uh, kind of clear the air for anybody who's kind of in the dark halfway, not understanding what has, has been going on recently. But it all boils down to this. Um, uh, even now, when I joke that the title of this video is Taking the Gloves Off, I cannot bring myself to stoop to the level of a personal attack against these people. I cannot bring myself to even mention their names because I feel that uh, the, the debate should always be on a principle or a doctrine, not personal. So that's the best I can do to tell you, you know, uh, the, 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 the problems that uh, we've been facing and how we've been trying to deal with them. So I hope that uh, this has been helpful to anybody who's been curious about wondering, well, what's this fight all about? It's uh, pretty simple, really. Um, I, I think it's very healthy to engage in, in, in debate and, and argue over doctrines. Uh, as long as we agree on these most basic core beliefs of Christianity, everything else we should be able to discuss and learn from each other and, and discuss it and disagree respectfully, but never resort to name-calling and personal attacks. That is something that, uh, you know, the, you know the saying, what would Jesus do? Well, I've, I made a video talking about what did Jesus do? What WDJD? What did Jesus do? Understanding and believing in what Jesus did for us, for our salvation, it, that's what gives us salvation. But the saying, what would Jesus do? We don't live our we don't live our lives asking, well, what should Jesus do? And I want to copy him. That's not what we do for salvation. But what would Jesus do is a perfectly good question for us to ask ourselves as we walk our lives as a Christian. Would Jesus resort to the things? Would Jesus make these kinds of videos that I've described here? Would Jesus refer to me, even if I thought I was wrong about something, as uh, Sin City Puker? I want everyone to think about that, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, you will repent. I hope that you really are ashamed of what you've done and repent. So bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.